if I wanted to defeat the United States, what would I do? Listen, there's one thing that stands between uh, the Antichrist getting seated on the saddle of his power. There's one thing that stops that. Everybody says, uh, look at this verse. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. What that means is Satan right now would be the dictator of this world if there was a way he could do it. He would put in his man of sin the, quote, Antichrist. Some of you heard of the, that name, the Antichrist, a world global dictator. He would do it right now. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. In other words, he's been preparing and plotting and planning this, amen, from the, dawn of, uh, 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 from the Garden of Eden. Huh? Uh, but he that withholds, or he that letteth, uh, he that restrains the Antichrist from coming will do so. Look at that. He that letteth will let, or he that restrains will continue to restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked one, the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So there is a force in the world that is keeping the Antichrist from taking power. What is that force? People have said it's the church, or they've said it's the Holy Spirit. Obviously, it is in one form, the church. But what is it that all hell is trying to destroy in this world today? They are trying to destroy what? the United States of America. They're trying to weaken what? The United States of America. Because there is only one thing that stands between tyranny in this globe and where we're at today, and that is what? The freedom of the United States. You take the United States out, all of the building blocks immediately fall. You take the Constitution out, the United States falls. Notice, he shall be taken away. Isn't it interesting that they're doing everything in their power, not only to uh, uh, incriminate, but ultimately to do what? to uh, lock him up. Everybody say he. Now, I'm not saying that Donald Trump is the he here, but how do you know? All hell is doing what? Trying to keep this nation from getting back to the conservative Christian Judeo values that it was founded on. If we can eliminate the United States, then we can have complete control over this globe. How many of you know that? Lady uh, after church yesterday uh, from India that was there said, you're a scary preacher. Amen. That's all right. I'll be scary today. So if I was going to destroy America, what would I do? First of all, listen to me. I would dismantle our history. I would educate the next generation that we are an evil nation that was founded on racism and it ought to all be undone and our constitution ought to be done away with. I would get rid of historical sculptures. I would get rid of the arts. I would change the names of streets and institutions. If it says Lee or if it says Washington or if it says Franklin, I'd get rid of that. Listen to me, folks. If I was going to take over America, I would want to control the media. I'd control education. I'd control courts, I'd control sports, I'd control the election process. Amen. I'd do anything in my power to finagle the election process so it favored my plans. I would do what? I would uh, vilify, demonize, and deplatform anyone who strays away from what is politically correct. I would deplete our oil reserves. In fact, I'd send our oil reserves uh, to China. And I would stop uh, all the drilling and oil production because that's what fuels the economy and fuels our military. I would open up our borders uh, and let especially men ages 20 to 35 run through by not the hundreds or thousands. I'd tried to get millions uh, to come illegally into this country. Amen. I would feminize uh, and emasculate our military. I would defund uh, our police. That's a big one. I would purge our military of conservative top brass. I would put military in the hands of the globalists. I would disarm the public. I would foment woke rioting on our streets. I'd turn industry over to China. I'd get control of our colleges and universities. I'd make a union that could uh, control the education of our children. And then I would make parenting a crime. Now this is what I'd do if I was trying to destroy the one thing that restrains the power of Antichrist from coming, the United States. Amen? 
I would censor speech. I would compromise the presidency. I would censor social media. I would purge dissenting voices in journalism. I would create a crisis like the COVID test run to see how many people I could get to wholesale believe a lie. I would harness technology and artificial intelligence. I'd get the FBI and the CIA to surveil all the opposition. I'd allow spy balloons to photograph our military bases. I'd allow enemy nations to buy up our lands, buy up our utilities, buy up our oil companies like Jehoshaphat. I would broadcast all of our military secrets on Facebook in different places so they would have it. I would abort as many of the next generation as I could get aborted if I wanted amen, to take over this nation. I would tell our next generation and confuse them by saying a man is a woman and a woman is a man and a man can become a woman and a woman can become a man. I would foment rebellion against parents and societal norms. I would indoctrinate our youth against old fuddy-duddy ways that their parents had and their churches had and I would infiltrate the church and seduce its ministers and I would distort its doctrines and I would end its evangelism. That's what I would do. Oh, oh, that's what they're already doing. That's what they're already doing. As much as we need to pray for the nations and Israel, and then what? The church of God. That doesn't mean just the church, but the nations, amen, that are sheep nation. Now, I'd also need to do what? Not only America, but I pray for Israel. Give me some points here. Maybe we can get on, on track with this. But God is not finished with Israel. Anybody that teaches a replacement theology that says the church has taken the place of Israel and that God is done with Israel and that the government in, that is in there is a fraudulent government and the UN and everybody needs to get rid of them. Listen, folks, that is God's land. Blindness in part has happened to Israel. Yes, they don't believe in the Jesus that you believe in. Yes, they don't have gospel sermons like we have today. Because why? They have been blinded, but it's only happened in part. Why? Until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. God has the Jews, he has the church, and he has the nations. And God said, I'm bringing the nations to God. And so listen, when the time is right, all Israel shall be saved. Everybody say what's in gold there. All Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, Romans 11, 26 and 27. And so God is not done with his, his, his nation. I, 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 Israel amazes me, folks. It is the eighth most powerful military and economy on this planet. It only has 9 million people. But look at it as it stands shoulder to shoulder with nations like United States, number one, China, two, Russia, three, Germany, four, uh, UK, five, South Korea, six, France, seven, uh, and, uh, uh, and then Japan, uh, eight, uh, and United Arab Emirates, nine, and then Israel. And amongst all of that wealth and all of that glory, God has raised up just in 75 years a nation that stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with every other power in the world. That is not coincidental or accidental. It's what? God is not finished with his native people. Number two, the atrocities of October 7th have touched what? The apple <coughs> of his eye. Zechariah 2 and 8 says, after the glory, or it means he's, there's, there's a glory move. God's doing a work in the last day. And after the glory, he sent me out to the nations to do what? To bring my people back, those nations that have spoiled you. And he said, he that touches you, watch this, touches the apple of his eye. Israel is the apple of God's eye. And listen, folks, when you go bringing terrorist attacks against the apple of his eye, that's like sticking your finger right in the eyeball of God himself. Now, what is the apple of your eye? If there's one person in this house, then I would say, who is Chris, the apple of Chris's eye? What would you say? Tricia. Okay, so what's that? God said, I'm married to her. This is my bride under the old covenant. And now we have the bride of Christ that belongs to Jesus. Amen. But for the Father, he said, you touch Israel, you're touching the first lady on the front row. Let me tell you something, folks. That cannot go well. 
for anybody that sticks their finger, pokes it in the eyes of heaven. Number three, the Hamas attack was named Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. Now think about this. The, the attack against Israel, 3,000 Palestinians across the border and mutilated and killed 1,400 people, planned by Hamas with Iran, and it was called Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. Now, Al-Aqsa is the Dome of the Rock, is the Al-Aqsa uh, 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 palace or shrine, mosque rather, and it's what? It's the farthest, Al-Aqsa, the farthest. It means it's the farthest from Mecca. And uh, the armies that would stand for that mosque are the Al-Aqsa Brigade, and they what? They call it the Al-Aqsa Flood. Now listen, folks, a flood came against Israel. How many know they opened up the floodgates? But what did God say in Isaiah 59 and verse 19? He said, my glory is as the rising to the setting of the sun. And they made this statement. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. Amen. I don't care what kind of floods come against your life. Amen. If it's happening in the natural in Israel, it will happen in the spiritual for you and I. Let the devil huff and puff. Let him break the dams down. Amen. And send the flood of, uh, 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 of sin against this culture. But the Spirit of God will rise up against it. Number four, Hamas means violence. Hamas is a Bible word. You say, I didn't know that. We see it the first time it appears is in Genesis 6 and verse 11. In the days of Noah, right before the flood, and the signs of Noah's day would be the signs preceding the last days, correct? And listen to what God said. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. If you read it right out of the original Hebrew, the world was filled with Hamas. Now, Hamas will tell you they've adapted that word and turned it to mean resistance. And so Hamas means the resistance. But if you take it from the Hebrew, amen, and date it back to every place it's quoted in the Bible, it is always translated violence. So let me tell you something, folks. These things are already prophesied in the Bible. It's already written. When we read about Ishmael in the Old Testament, this is what God said about him in Genesis 16, 12. This son of yours will be a wild man, as untamed as a wild donkey. He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Why is it that the other Arabic nations have not opened up their doors to receive the uh, refugees that would come from the Gaza Strip? think that one through huh why haven't they been assimilated into other countries because of that verse right there number five there's violence and the other nations don't want to open to the violence number five it's hard to identify a difference between the people and the Hamas leaders now we are very more praying that anybody that's innocent and anybody that had nothing to do with this will find a way of escape I'm not one bit supportive or behind the decisions of Benjamin Netanyahu because I have no, I have no stake in this game. Neither, neither do you. Huh? But this is who God has placed in the seat of power for them at this time. Our job is just to say, God, let your will be done. Huh? And if there's any way you can save and salvage and turn this thing around, we want you to do it. But what happens? They had the Palestinian Liberation Organization as their... As their uh, uh, pseudo-government over that area and Gaza Strip rejected it and elected in election Hamas to be the rulers. So what's that mean? That's what they asked for. That's what they have. Uh, amen. Don't look down on me today. I'm going to get to good things in a minute, but I'm just telling you what it says biblically. Ezekiel 25 verse 6 prophesies of where we're at right now. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Because you clapped and danced and cheered with glee at the destruction of my people. I will raise my fist of judgment against you. Now listen, folks, they're doing, they painted red all over the, uh, the, the fence of uh, the White House today. They are marching all up and down the streets of nations around the world. Uh, and, 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 and what? You watched on TV the cheering. Amen. They've interviewed numerous leaders from Hamas, and all have said, 
uh, we have every right to do this. Uh, Israel has no place in the Islamic caliphate. And therefore, uh, whatever happens, no matter how many lives are lost or how the lives are lost, it doesn't matter. What's happening, folks? Clapping, dancing, cheering. Amen. At the destruction of Israel. This is a terrifying thing that we're looking at today. There is a spirit of glee over the loss of 1,400 lives. And even in 9-11 in the United States, there was clapping and rejoicing in many nations over the death, not only of Jews, but then what? The United States that stands in agreement. I will raise my fist of judgment against you and I will give you as a plunder to many nations and I will cut you off from being a nation and destroy you completely. Then you will know what? And here's the key. In all of this stuff that we're looking at in these studies, know that I am the Lord. The word there is what? Jehovah. You will know that I am Jehovah. Everybody say Yahweh. Amen. There is one sovereign God in this world, and his name is Jehovah. Number six, God will not allow a two-state solution. Amen. And the beautiful thing about Israel's government today, they have done everything in their power to make it possible for a two-state solution. They've done everything in their power to accommodate. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, but what's God say? He said, one day I'm going to gather all nations. We'll bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And will plead with them there for what? My people and for what? My heritage, Israel. That is what? The inheritance is what? The inheritance is land. It's always land. For the church, our inheritance is the Holy Spirit. But for them, their inheritance is land. And God says, I've given them an inheritance. And their inheritance involves what? Land. Well, can't we trade land for peace? Israel has done that over and over and over. Huh? Huh? Every nation that's tried to dictate land for peace has had unbelievable tornadoes, hurricanes, calamities, and catastrophes on the very day that anything was ever signed. He says, they have scattered um, my people among the nations. And then what's this last line? We looked at it two weeks ago. And parted, what? My land. Everybody say it's God's land. I'm not interfering on that. Hallelujah. Next slide. Notice this from right there. Uh, verse 4 of that same chapter. In the south is what? Hamas. In the north is what? Lebanon, Syria, Hezbollah. To the farther right, uh, Al-Qaeda, and now converted to ISIS. God says to Tyre and Zidon, which is modern-day Lebanon, Syria, what have you to do with me, O Tyre? Why are you in this fight? Does that make sense? Uh, th this, is not you, this is not your thing. You're on the other side of the border. This doesn't, uh, this doesn't deal with you. But they're sticking their finger in business and sticking their finger in God's eye. Nonetheless, he said, what, have I to do, what do you have to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, Hezbollah, and all the coasts of Palestine, that's down what? That's, once again, the coastline, which is Gaza Strip. Will you render me a recompense? Why do they keep firing stuff? Well, I'm going to pay you back. I'm going to pay you back. You moved into my land, my land I'm going to recompense. Well, it's not their land. I'm going to show you that in a minute. If you, will you render me any recompense? And if you recompense me, God says you're going to pay me back. Huh? You stuck me in the eye, and so I stuck you in the eye, and now you're going to pay me back by sticking me in the eye again? If you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return? Watch this. Because how, how did they try to recompense? They have 150,000 rockets right now lined up in Hezbollah, ready to fire on Israel. They've sent several thousand of them already. But if you're going to poke me in the eye, I will recompense you speedily and return your recompense where? On your head. This comes from above, number six. Sir. And uh, if you want a better glimpse of what we're talking about, Egypt, Jordan, Transjordan, Dead Sea, but... Uh, can't get my finger that high, but if you see right here on this little green strip here is the Gaza Strip. And clear to the north where it says Tyre, that's where Hezbollah is based. And so Israel only has the light brown strip of ground. 
That that is striped to the right is the West Bank. And they have freely given that over into the hands of the Palestinian uh, Liberation Organization, which is now a, a, a defunct government, but it, uh, it's not a nation. It's just an area of land where people live. Give me the next slide. Let me show you something. The land has always belonged to Israel. If we read in Zephaniah, and I could find probably 50 different places at least, where God says, I'm going to return you from the nations, and I'm going to restore you to your land. Hallelujah. At that time, time we're talking about, I will bring you again. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. Who would have ever thought that that little strip of land that I just showed you up there would be known all over the entire earth? A praise, Judah, all over the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord. After six million Jews were slaughtered in Nazi prison camps in the, mid the early 1940s, it was arranged, amen, when you look at Ezekiel 37 and the Valley of Dry Bones, we love to preach that as a revival sermon, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, but what is it really a picture of? It's a picture of six million Jews and you've watched the cadavers in open pits dug by bulldozers and, and uh, covered with uh, dirt as millions of Jewish people that had no, done nothing. Amen. But those bones came back to life. And God raised them up in 1948. And to where those bones would become what? An exceeding great army. And here I just mentioned to you that in the top ten most powerful countries, that's economic and military, we don't know if they might be one of the top three military powers in the entire globe. But the land belongs to Israel. I had things that I could share, and, we, uh, and uh, here's, a, here's a book that was written in 1695. 1695. Uh, let me just read a couple of things out of here. But clear back in 1695, when uh, Adriani Rilandi, a geographer and cartographer, went over and made maps of Israel, and he went to... 2,400 different villages, and most of them had names that go date all the way back to Bible days. Not Arabic names, not Philistine names, not Palestinian names, Hebrew names. Why? Because it was given to Abraham when there wasn't any opposition in the land except a few nomads. And then what David set up a, a kingdom there, and Solomon built the temple there. This land belonged to Israel. He made a map. He made a population census of every settlement. Here were his main conclusions. The country is mostly empty, abandoned, and sparsely populated, but the main population is in Jerusalem, Safed, Jaffa, Tiberias, and Gaza, and most of the population are Jews. This is in 1700. I, we can look in 1800, 1900. We can look at 500 B.C. We can look at 200 B.C. The only thing we have a written record on is this book that has maps and population numberings for different settlements. And he said the only exception was Nablus, which is modern-day Shechem in Samaria, had about 120 from the Muslim Natsha family, and approximately 70 Samaritans lived there. In Nazareth, the capital of Galilee, there lived approximately 700 Christians. Nazareth was a Christian town. In Jerusalem, there were approximately 5,000 people. Almost all were Jews and a few Christians. There is not a single settlement in Palestine whose name has Arabic roots. Most settlements have Hebrew original names. So if you talk about uh, anything from Jerusalem, Jerusalem, etc., uh, uh, Ramallah, which is modern-day modern day Ramallah, was in existence there, and that's where the, uh, the headquarters for... Abbas is. And so there were areas that had uh, nomadic tribes. But notice what he said here. Rolandi mentioned Muslims only as Bedouin nomads who came to the cities as seasonal workers in agriculture or construction. Approximately 550 people lived in Gaza. Half of them were Jews and the other half were Christians. 
The book completely refutes theories about Palestinian tradition, Palestinian people, and leaves almost no connection between this land and the Arabs who even stole the Latin name Palestine from the Hebrew Palestine. Palestine. So what are you saying, Chris? Amen. I'm not saying nobody has right to live there. I'm just saying this thing has always belonged to God's people. So we take another look at the old hatred. Ezekiel 25, thus says the Lord, because the Philistines, Philistia, that's what, Palestina, have dealt how? By revenge. You poke your finger in my eye, I'm poking my finger in your eye, and have taken vengeance with what? A despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. The old hatred goes back 3,500 years between Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael mocked Isaac at his bar mitzvah, 12th birthday. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will stretch out my hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off the cherubims and destroy the remnant where? Gaza Strip, the sea coast. And I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes. Why? That they may know that I am what? Jehovah. There it is again. Number nine. Don't want to spend much time there because I don't... But, but the old hatred is perpetuated because it is propagated. I said that for my last statement two weeks ago. Did you know, folks, that if you stand with Israel, here's what we can expect. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Why? Not because we're just hated for Jesus, but we're hated because Jesus is the Messiah of the Jewish people. And this, this old hatred will stand until Jesus splits the eastern sky and comes back, number 10. And, and it's propagated. How's it propagated? Ba back up to that. How's it propagated? Lord, I don't have time to finish this up, but, 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 but we have in America today student visas and students for justice in Pal Palestine, Jewish voice for peace, Palestinian youth movement, if not now, then when, and et cetera, folks. So we have wokeness on the streets. We've got uh, anti-Christian groups, and, and Trisha and I have been watching the news, and every single news report you Watch this and see if I'm not right on this. It doesn't matter if it's woke. It doesn't matter if it's communism. It doesn't matter if it is fighting for Palestinian freedom. The, from, the, from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. The one thing in common on every one of them, every single person in the marches has a COVID mask on. Look it up. That has become the defining trademark of rebellion against America. Hallelujah. You saw the uh, Dagestan region of Russia where the airport got attacked the other day. And uh, they went, busted through an airport. Hundreds and hundreds of people. To, they had heard that an Israeli plane was landing on their tarmac. There is a hatred for the old hatred for the Jewish people today. Number 10, remember that Gaza means fortified. So this is a demonic stronghold. Huh? Uh, look at Judges 16:21. I've been studying a lot on this week. And uh, I promise you next week, listen, I've got a sermon I've been working on entitled, I Think Myself Happy. How many of you like a happy sermon next week? And I think I'm going to do a whole series on that. But notice, we're not there yet. Watch this. They took Samson and what? The Philistines be upon you, O Samson, right? They gouged out his eyes and they brought him down to where? Gaza. And bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison. This is a symbolism of Jewish might that had been attacked and imprisoned in Gaza. What happened? His hair grew out. And he said, let me feel for the pillars. Amen. And he said, Lord, do it one more time. Well, what happened, folks? Uh, the walls began to crumble and the balcony fell. And this is the interesting thing about it. 3,000 people in the house of the palace of Dagon, their God. 3,000 died in that stance of Samson. It's interesting, 3,000 terrorists crossed into Israel within a month ago. Huh? To gouge out. Oh, we don't have time to talk about it. The, the white refrigerated trucks and trailers 
are filled with a stench that those that are going in trying to put body parts together to define who, which belongs to which. They have found women who had been pregnant, who had been severed from their top to the bottom, and uh, babies laying next to them beheaded. It's a horrible thing that has happened. And it what? It is a spirit. Gaza means what? Fortified. It is a stronghold. It is a demonic stronghold that has been there back to the days of Joshua. There were no Anakim left where, but except in Gaza and Gath and Ashdod, number 10, 11. Islamic jihadists are committed to the total destruction of Israel. We don't have time to finish all of this, but let's look at this a little bit. Go to Psalm 83, if you would, this morning. And uh, we'll, we'll close by just walking through this psalm a little bit. I had 15 points. I don't want to do that to you. And the reason I don't want to do that to you is why, Chris? Because right now, old time, you would all be at the supper table. How many of you know that? Anybody getting hungry? Anybody ready for your afternoon nap? Man, this is coming on too quick. How many of you did like us? I hollered into the other room. I said, Tricia, it's 7 o'clock. Get up. And she said, I'm already dressed. I've been up for three hours. <laughs> so we can't keep you all day. Do you have a Bible? You should bring a Bible to church. Psalm 83 tells us what could expand here if this thing got out of hand. And uh, I don't know what all other points I had up there, but it doesn't matter. We don't need to do that today. We'll go to Psalm 83. Uh, I wrote down in my Bible verses 1 through Verses 1 through 5, confederacy, confederation. Everybody say confederation. Then I wrote from verse 6 down to 12, uh, confrontation. Everybody say confrontation. There's a confederation. It brings a confrontation. Then in verse 13 through uh, 17, there is a conflagration. Amen. This thing's going to burn out of hand. Then in verse 18, confirmation. And what's the confirmation in verse 18? That men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. How do you know, folks? Uh, and I don't care what your religion is focused on, whether it's Allah or whether it's on Mary or whether it's on this or whether it's on that. There's a lot of names out there, folks, that people are worshiping. But God is going to have the last say to all, not only the Jews and the church of God, but to the nations to let them know who is Jehovah. Let's just walk through this real quick, and then we, we're going to baptize Gabby if she still wants to. Look at verse 1. Keep not silence, O God. How can he? Amen. Amen. Your enemies, in verse 2, make a tumult. That's what? That's terrorism. Those that hate you have lifted up the head. They've taken counsel against you and against your hidden ones. They, they broke through. You know, Israel right now is in storm shelters and bomb shelters because of the many rockets that are falling. They've taken crafty counsel against your hidden ones. Verse 4, look what they said. They said, come, let us them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. That is the whole purpose of many governments is to push Israel into the sea. So that it, look at that, so it will cease from being a nation and won't be remembered anymore. They've consulted together with one consent. They're what confederate? Here's the confederation. The tabernacles of Edom. It's part of northern Jordan. Moab, southern Jordan. Ishmaelites, that's the, that's the uh, uh, Bedouins and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the nomadic tribes that have filled the area there. And uh, the Hagarenes. Remember, Hagar had uh, not only Ishmael as a son, but she had many, many others after that. And all of them are standing against modern Israel. Gebal and Ammon. I'm not sure what Gebal is. I haven't been able to find it. But Ammon is what the Ammonites, Ammon and Amalek. Amalek comes down through Midian and down through, uh, through, through Keturah's side. And the Philistines, Palestina, with the inhabitants of Tyre. And there you have Lebanon again. 
Asher, which is the word Assyria. Assyria also is joined with them. So we're talking about not only Lebanon and now Syria. And have helped the children of Lot and Lot's generations. Do unto them as unto Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the brook Kison, which perished at Endor. They became as the dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Ze Zeb. Yea, all the princes of Zeba and Zalmune. And that's what? That's from Ammon to Zalmuna. That's from A to Z. God is going to deal with this whole thing from A to Z. Verse 13, O God. Make them like a wheel as the stubble book. It'd be something for God's mighty wheel of justice to run over any nation. Huh? Israel, the church, and the nations. God, we want to, and let me close with this, but, but, but here's, what I, here's what I closed with yesterday over there, and that is what? Could God be setting up a Jonah replay which was what? Just as Jonah despised the Assyrians because of what? They'd done the same thing to the children of Israel that Hamas had done. But God said, I want you to go preach to them. I want you to love them. Amen. That's, what, that's where the church is at today. Come on, folks. To declare that God can alter history. God can stop the judgment that is decreed and he can step in. And listen, when the horses are running through the heavenlies, I can reach up and grab the bridle of the chief horse and stop the whole judgment from happening. If I can get a people, amen, that will pray and that will preach the word, amen, and will love people that were unlovable. Jonah said, I can't love them. I don't want to preach them. I don't want to do it. But guess what? God had to stick him in a whale for a while, but he ended up preaching to the very ones, amen, that he was pronouncing judgment and wrath and anathema on. And what did God do as Jonah sat up on the hillside and thought, sure enough, I knew it. God was going to forgive the Palestinians. God was going to forgive the Assyrians. God was going to send a revival. Well, wouldn't that be the greatest thing that could happen? And he said, listen, J Jonah, why are, you, why are you crying right now? You, you cared about the children that were lost in your country. He said, do you not realize that in Assyria there are 60,000 kids that can't even discern between the right hand and left? They're just babies there. Huh? Don't tell me that God is a God of wrath that wants to fling kids over the, and dash them against a stone, as it says in Psalm 137. No, God wants to save people. God wants to bring forgiveness. And God wants to change lives. Sorry I've been so long this morning. I'll get off this rant and move on to happy, happy next week. Would you lift your hands and say, God, I want you to spare. I want you to send a revival in the Middle East. I want you, Lord, to touch the nation of Israel. God, if these are judgments that must come to pass, then, Lord, we stand out of the way and we say, Oh, God, let Jehovah be glorified. Let his name be honored and glorified in the earth. But, Lord God, if there's any way, Lord, that you can intervene, then, Lord God, decapitate the head of this snake. Lord, drive the terrorism out of Israel. Lord God, remove the violence in whatever way it has to be done. But, Lord Jesus, could you spare and save a generation?